بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف وجعلنا من أعوانه وأنصاره اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الوهم وأكرمني بنور الفهم اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزائن علومك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين الحمد لله we have توفيق to have our second session on لب اللباب and as you remember we said that the wayfarer in this material world is very much surrounded and distracted at the beginning by multiplicities, by katharat which are there. Food, I don't know, drink, uh, comfortable, you know, place to rest, car, lots of things that we see or hear and then we want and they can uh, sometimes more than necessary uh, draw our attention towards themselves and sometimes they can even become our you know goals and ideals in the life but we said what helps and it's reviving it's refreshing is to receive some breathes of mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as hadith says, إِنَّ لِرَبِّكُمْ فِي أَيَّامِ دَهْرِكُمْ نَفَحَاتٌ أَلَا فَتَعَرَّضُوا لَهَا وَلَا تُعْرَضُوا عَنْهَا Allah certainly in your life has some breathes, some radiations, some attractions. And be sure that you, uh, make sure that you expose yourself and present yourself to them ta'arradu laha expose yourself to them not that you turn away you know sometimes imagine if we have been waiting for something and then just the time that that is going to happen we leave we go away maybe we were waiting for example for a scholar, for example, or, you know, a mu'min, someone, you know, that for some time, you know, we were looking for, and then, because just when he came, we were busy with other things, we had left, or we were tired, then we would lose the opportunity. And sometimes, maybe unexpectedly, even you were not waiting for it, actually, many times, uh, openings and you know for too hard in spiritual things happen when you didn't expect anything many times they surprise so you have to expose yourself to them and don't turn away and then we said that the provision in this journey is mujahada is to struggle, to make efforts, to be steadfast and persistent. And with this persistence, little by little, we can cut off all the chains that uh, make us, unfortunately, you know, arrested and imprisoned in this. Now, if we manage to remain persistent and get rid of these physical, material things that can uh, draw our attention, then we go to a higher stage. And in this stage, maybe you 
have nothing around you external that would draw your attention but we have a bigger problem bigger in the sense that it's more difficult to get rid of you know like when you are in primary school uh, you get certain questions for exams when you go to secondary you get you know more difficult questions so these are more difficult although you are in a higher place it's not that you are in a worse situation because your exam are more exams are more difficult so in this second stage what we need to make sure is we don't let our thoughts to preoccupy us and draw our attention those thoughts that come to our mind those thoughts that maybe are imaginary even many times we fall in love with something or someone that we just have imagined or we are afraid of something that we have imagined don't think that we are always affected by realities no it's not always like that i don't need always to see a wild animal to so that i can fear sometimes i may just imagine that there is a wild animal and i fear this is why you know when there is for example a dark place some people are afraid just because it is dark even if it is in their own home and they know the door is locked and just you know there is power interruption now everything is dark they are afraid but doors were closed windows were closed no animal has come inside no thief has come inside why you are afraid it's because of imagination so it's not only realities or facts that can affect us actually maybe there are realities and because we are not aware of them and pay no attention to them we are not afraid <laughs> maybe there is a wild animal just behind the door and i don't see that animal maybe there is a for example a snake i am not seeing so i'm not afraid so there is a reality but because i don't know i'm not afraid on the other hand maybe there is no a snake but just thinking that this might be a snake for example you know there is a clothes you know uh, uh, somewhere you know from distance i think maybe it's a snake i'm afraid or just thinking so our imagination has a has a great role uh, in keeping us busy sometimes with imagination you may get pleasure sometimes with imagination you may get you know pain and suffering and fear and stress what is important is that we have to get control over our imaginations over our thoughts i should not let anything frighten me more than its proper measure if something is just likely i should not take it as certain and also i should not let it become a big issue in human relations many times this happened that you know maybe someone said something and they didn't mean or if even if they mean just was a joke or you know I, or maybe just you know lack of care they didn't you know uh, think carefully about what they said but it's not that they meant you know to harm us hurt us etc but sometimes we let this to become a big issue and day and night you know keep us you know busy and you know within and it uh, becomes stronger stronger to the extent that sometimes you want to explode and you want to for example make this a case you know to fight that person so this is a big problem so here it says 
هنوز از خستگی راه نیاسوده وارد عالم برزخ که کثرت انفسیه است میگردد so there are few terms that you have to be familiar he says this wayfarer has not yet rested because he has already come you know distance forward for a distance he has got rid of the material distractions But before having some rest, then he enters Barzakh. Barzakh here doesn't mean the world after death, before resurrection, although that is also called Barzakh. But Barzakh, you know, in Arabic means interval, something that happens or occurs between two things. مرج البحرين يلتقيان بين ما برزخ لا يبغيان. So if there is a you know interval or is you know gap, this is called برزخ. When we dream, we see in our dream, for example, a person or an animal or a flower, whatsoever. We see something, something is happening. And it may also have big impact on you. You know, sometimes in your dream, you are very much enjoying or you are very much, you know, suffering. Sometimes you scream in your dream. So there is an impact. But that person that you see in the dream or that animal or plant, etc., where are they? They are not in the physical, material world. Maybe you dream of someone who lives in this world, but the, this dream is not that person. It's dream of that person. And maybe you dream of someone who has died or someone who has never existed or someone who's going to be born. Sometimes, you know, we dream a child to be born. So where is that dream? That dream is possibly in our khayal. It's in our imagination. Our mind has been active by making some Photoshop. This is your mind in you know, working something. Even Photoshop can never be as good as our mind. So, this is one possibility. But there is another possibility that your mind is connected to alam khayal, not to your own quwwah khayal. Alam khayal. In philosophy, inshallah, you will see, or maybe some of you have already studied philosophy, that. According to some philosophers, like Sheikh Ishraq, Rahmatullah Alay, and some of our contemporary you know, philosophers also have accepted this in transcendent philosophy, also there is a room for this. But in Mashai, Prepatetic, no, they didn't have this idea, at least in the time of earlier ones. So according to Sheikh Ishraq and people like him, We don't have only five substances. Al Jawahir Khamsa. There are five substances. There is Madde, Surat, Jism, Nafs, Ruh, which, which means Aql. Aql is absolutely Mujarrat, completely free from any potentials. There is no Madde, Madde in the philosophical sense is responsible for potentiality. It just accepts forms. So, Aql, or maybe some in some places, like for example here later we say, you know, Ruh, but not human spirit, means absolutely 
abstract, absolutely actual. Then nafs, like human soul, human spirit, is in essence mujarrat. Mujarradun zatan means in essence our nafs, as soon as it is created, is immaterial. But in fi'l, in actions, is maddi. Your nafs is in need of gradual or sudden changes. Whether gradual or sudden changes can happen to nafs. And we change a lot. Then we have jism, which is the substance which is three-dimensional. And then we have madde and surat, which are responsible for uh, accepting forms is madde and form is the actuality. Anyway, this is five substances. Sheikh Ishraq says we have something between nafs and aql, and that is barzakh, or he calls it misal, alam misal, the universe which has things which are between nafs and aql, things which are not completely mujarrad, not uh, like for example aql, but they have some level of, they are not three-dimensional etc. and they may have shape and you know size, this kind of things, like a person that we see in the dream or when someone dies, when someone dies, his spirit would be with badane or jesme methali, with a kind of ethereal body or a kind of barzakhi body, a kind of body that has size and shape but no physical mass. In any case, we don't want to go into this discussion. This is what we need to discuss in philosophy. But I just wanted to tell you that Barzakh here is Alam Barzakh and it is like Alam Mithal, as we say in philosophy. So, this wayfarer, after making some progress and managing to go beyond materialistic distractions would be then dealing with a bigger challenge and that is the thoughts, the ideas, imaginations that come. Maybe they have some basis, maybe they have no basis, just our imagination. And it's very difficult to keep your mind focused because of these thoughts that come. You see, they are also very wild. <laughs> All of a sudden, you know, from something from, I don't know, uh, family or community or society or the globe, you know, something about East or West, you know, many, you know, wild, scattered ideas can come and go. It's like a jungle. You know, our minds, if it is not uh, trained and it's not controlled, it becomes like a jungle. All these wild thoughts come and go. But they don't just come and go as visitors. They want to settle there. They want to, you know, uh, remain there. They want to be able to come and go as they like. And you are the victim here that, you know, you have to <laughs> accommodate them if you don't control them. They control you. So, he says, Hanuz az khastegi rah nayasude varede alam barzakh ke kathrate anfusiyas migardad. Before he or she has some breast, would he would or she would enter the world of 
the universe of Barzakh, which is psychic multiplicity, the world or the realm of psychic multiplicities, not material or physical multiplicity, psychic. He would see here what those things that he used to, you know, be under their control, under their effect, now what they have left inside. The thoughts about them, the ideas about them. <laughs> He says, these things which are stuck or stored in our mind, these are results of our encounter with external multiplicities. And these are fruits and outcomes and children for those external physical multiplicities so we have been busy with physical life but now they have left something that even if you seclude yourself in a room they are there you know if I don't want to see something to distract me I can close my eyes if I don't want you know some for example perfume uh, you know distract me or some pictures distract me I can close my eye I can you know for example go to a room and close the door I don't know I can somehow physically distance myself from this katharate kharaji this katharate maddi etc but how can I get rid of these thoughts that come to my mind I cannot even in a closed room protect myself from these thoughts because they come from inside and the only key for control is to work internally and strengthen your ability to manage your mind and your imagination in khiyalat mane'e as safar u mi shavand va aramish u ra mi girand these thoughts don't let this favor to carry on with his journey and would take away his serenity his tranquility vachun salik saati bekhahad dar zikr khuda biyaranad this wayfarer wants to rest not physically to rest remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says let me read Quran and you know get connected to it. let me say salat and get connected to Allah let me do some sajda and get connected to Allah as soon as he wants to have a spiritual moment of peace and connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala nagahan chun sail bar u hujum awade like a flood they attack all these different thoughts they don't just come to annoy you they want to destroy you for a wayfarer destruction is not to be physically killed destruction is to change your mind destruction is to be no longer a wayfarer there's a very beautiful poem here it says John Hameruz as Lagad Kub Khayal Vazianu Sudo as Bime Zawal Ney Safa Mimanadash Ney Lotfu Far Ney Besuya Aosaman Rah Safar the soul trampled all day by thoughts of fears of downfall profit and loss even 
positive things, negative things, they don't make difference. And left neither with tranquility, nor dignity, nor charm, nor of a heavenward journey, any contrivance. So, nay besuye awesaman, rahe safar. There is no way to heaven for this person. So, this is very, very dangerous and very uh, maybe some people manage to go uh, beyond the physical distractions worldly pleasure etc but hardly people manage to get rid of their khayal and he talks about the you know the difficulty as i said you know you cannot even with you know, secluding yourself, isolating yourself physically, you know, uh, solve this problem. But someone who is traveling towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not lose the courage, would not become hopeless. Rather, he or she is determined to continue and would know that Allah supports people who struggle. Allah is not going to leave you alone, but you have to show that you, re you really are serious. But remember that even when you see that Alhamdulillah with your determination, Allah has supported you and you have become more and more at peace inside, be careful. Don't think you have finished the job because there is a great chance that there are still traces of these thoughts remaining in different corners or hidden layers of our heart and mind. You think, for example, no longer you have hope you don't think about position, you know, what people you know, judge about me, etc. But all of a sudden, something happens that brings this out. It's very difficult because, you know, when life is going normal, you may manage to control. For example, suppose. If I have, you know, good job, good income, and society is going, you know, all right, there is no, you know, drought, there is no war, there is no shortage, etc. And I have enough income, I don't see any greediness in myself. I don't see any selfishness in me. But as soon as shortage comes, or, you know, there's a war, I don't know that or I am losing my job, then sometimes I see my behavior changes. And if I'm not controlled, I see I have become a different person. The person who felt that he has no greediness, now he's trying to accumulate lots of money and, you know, or be selfish or, you know, for example, you know, sometimes like people drive very nicely, but if there is no, for example, electricity and the red lights are not working, or for example, sometimes they are in hurry and weather is very, I don't know, hot, there is no AC, then you see the way they drive is different. So, he says, Salik bayad besiyar bidar wa hushyar bashat. The wafer must be very alert very conscious ke dar zawaya ye khane ye dil chizi az in khiyalat be jay namande bashad so that in the corners nothing are remaining in the heart because these psychic beings <laughs> like imagination and thoughts 
they have such a habit that when you want to send them out of home, which is your heart, they don't go easily out. They try to hide and remain. This wayfarer who has been deceived, he thinks he has evacuated the house, means the heart, and nothing is there. But as soon as he wants to benefit from the spring of wisdom and quench his thirst, these thoughts attack and spoil that pure water of wisdom. And therefore, you see, you make mistakes, you make exaggerations, you get emotional. This is like mixing pure water with some bitter or some salt, you know, things, uh, materials, salty materials, that the sweetness, the pleasant, you know, taste of pure water is not there anymore. So these thoughts are very difficult to get rid of. He says the example of this wayfarer is like someone who has in his home imagine a pool or a pond you know you have a fountain or a pool in home and then because it has remained for some time without any you know motion disturbance little by little all the dirts you know go down so the surface is very clean even if you put your hand inside water, you can see your hand. It's very clean. But if you steer, especially deep, with a stick, you know, something, you know, this pond or this pool, you see lots of dirt come up. This is the problem. And this is why, you know, we say when people are tested, you can see their true face. And this is why, you know, if you travel with some people, especially difficult journeys, then you can see them in reality when they are challenged. Even governments are like this. <laughs> Organizations are like this. Leaders are like this. In the time of challenges and difficulties then you can see how moral they are how virtuous they are how polite they are otherwise when things are very normal maybe they have managed to control themselves if you remember uh, four years ago uh, I had a lecture in Arba'in 2016 uh, about Imam Hussein alayhi salam and that reflection you know came to my mind and I shared in that lecture that if you want to test someone and show what is in the bottom of their soul you need to challenge them many people when they are challenged you see more ugly face and now so abid dunya people are slaves of dunya dunya has enslaved them but they uh, speak about religion this is a, you know like a play with their lips they pay lip service to religion but but when they are tested those who are really faithful are very little so many people even people who most of the time in ordinary life you know they are good if they are tested there is a great chance that they are not that good anymore on the other hand there are people who are really gold. 
And you can only understand this when they are challenged. When there is shortage, when there is problem, when there is competition, when there is fight, their true face shines. And this is why I said in that lecture that if you want to know Imam Hussein alayhi salam, you cannot know him enough in Mecca or Medina, on Sajda, prayer mat, in Arafat, making dua ya Arafat. They are all excellent. But still, they cannot show Imam Hussein alayhi salam. If you want to see Imam Hussein alayhi salam's, you know, depths of soul, you need to see him in Karbala. And bring all the calamities of the world in a matter of few hours to him. With the worst of enemies. And see how this man is behaving. Is he changing into becoming a uh, selfish, vicious, disrespectful, without dignity, a mean person, a person who loses his control, or you would see him remaining mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, at peace, kind, and even he wants his enemies to be saved. Therefore, nothing like Karbala can show Imam Hussein. Nothing like Karbala and post Karbala can show Lady Zainab. So, this is just the point that when I read this point, I remember that uh, thing about Imam Hussein. Salam, I cannot, you know, keep, uh, not share it with you. So, the example of wayfarer is like someone who has a pond or a pool in home and beneath is covered with dirt, germs, lots of clay, but because it has not moved, looks very nice and clean, but when it is moved, you see it's dirty, even becomes, you know, so dark that maybe you cannot even see 10 centimeters inside the water. لذا باید آنقدر سالک با مجاهده و ریاضت تحصیل آرامش خیال به نماید که موالید خیالیه او در ذهن او متحجر شده و نتوانند قیام نموده You must so much do a struggle and riyadha that these things forever remain there at the end of the bottom and become like rock متحجر <laughs> become they like hajar means they are no longer able to come up. If you can clean or at least freeze them <laughs> so that they can never come up and distract you. After this, when you pass alam tab wa so when you pass the material, the physical world, and then this psychic or, you know, methali world, then varade alam ruh, the realm of a spirit, which is now very abstract. And then other uh, stages, which he says, uh, inshallah, later we will explain. The summary of it is that the wafer which has become successful has got tawfiq to carry on and be persistent little by little can 
watch can observe his soul or her soul you can see your nafs and we have here beautiful examples about seeing your nafs and you can see sifat wa asma ilahiyat you can see divine names and attributes and little by little you can reach the level of fana kulli means total annihilation and then when you are totally uh, uh, getting rid of your self in the sense of restrictive self then you would be able to have a life in God to endure with God maqam baqa but baqa billah baqa bi ma'bud which is the Allah who is worshipped and then you will become able to really enjoy eternal life even in this world before you die you can get this experience you don't need to die till you get this experience and then he has this uh, beautiful poem هرگز نمیرد آن که دلش زنده شد به عشق those whose hearts are revived with love they will never die ثبت است در جریده عالم دوام ما our immortality is registered on the world's tablet so we are going to remain yes in a sense every person is going to remain but as I said this is even before you die and this is a deep level of uh, remaining alive as we have it about martyrs everyone is high but Allah says وَلَا تَحْسَبَنَّ الَّذِينَ قُتِلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ أَمْوَاتَ Don't think that those who are killed for the sake of Allah, they are dead. Maybe you say, no one is dead, even a person who dies with accident or, you know, death by, I don't know, illness, etc. Or he's very old, you know, dies, they are all alive. No, no, this is different. أَحْيَاءٌ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ Yurzaqun, they are alive and they are close to the Lord and they receive sustenance just to be alive yes every human soul after death is alive but some people their life is very weak they cannot do anything that you know they cannot understand except very little although they can still understand but it's very li little like those who are in, for example, na'uzu billah in hell. Allah says, la yamutu fiha wa la yahya. Although they are not dead, but they are not also that much alive. Very weak experience of life. In some lectures, you know, we have discussed this. What elements of life are not present there. But martyrs are ahya'un inda rabb him yurzaqun and they receive sustenance but this is not only for martyrs there are people that before they die they are somehow martyrs before they physically die they have already died mutu qabla an tamutu die before you die what does it mean means before you are forced by death or by you know enemies killing you before you are forced to leave this physical world disconnect yourself from this physical world by not relying on it by not worshiping it not choosing this physical world as your permanent place as your you know place for fixed attention etc act as someone who is a spiritual act like an angel in this world with minimum 
interaction with this world. A little food, a little drink, a little, I don't know, a sleep, pleasure. Yes, we need these things. But just to the minimum, just to get energy to continue. But these are not your priorities. These are not your aims in life. These are not the things that day and night, you know, you are concerned about. Your concern is something else. Okay. Here, then there is a discussion that needs at least maybe 15 minutes about Vajhullah and about a wayfarer and Vajhullah and then Vajhullah and names of God and the possibility of a wayfarer becoming name of God in the sense of a manifestation of God. Inshallah we will discuss this in the next week followed by the discussion about Muraqaba. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us appreciate this opportunity that we have that uh, Alhamdulillah we have health, we have life, we have you know uh, peace we have some time, some faragh, some free time to work on ourselves. We ask Allah to help us before it becomes late, before we lose this opportunity to change ourselves, transform ourselves into people who are really wayfarers in this bright path of nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen.